Welcome back. In today's lecture, I am going to explore about inner products and norms. Okay. So, what we have understood so far that we have understood the concept of vector spaces and using the concept of vector spaces, I have explored several other quantity like subspace, after that, I have talked about the linear dependence, linear independence, basis, dimension, these kind of things. Okay. Now, if you see restriction of vector space, then what kind of restriction basically we have? We do not know how to talk about the distance in this particular space. Okay. We know how to operate. Okay. So, for operation, we have defined two different operations that is vector addition and a scalar multiplication. Okay. And if you see carefully the vector addition and a scalar multiplication, that is nothing but the generalization of these, these things. Suppose that during your physics lecture or somewhere, you might have seen that if you have two vectors and this vector V1 and V2, if you have to add v1 plus v2, then what basically we are doing? We are completing like this and this is v2 and after that we are telling that this is the addition. Okay. So, in this way we are defining v1 and v2. Okay. Whenever we are defining the scaling of any vector, okay, at that time I know that if I scale this vector by some quantity c, then that is elongate up to some dimension, dimension or contract. If C is less than 1, then that is going to contract. Okay. If that is negative, then also we are knowing what, what is going to happen. Okay. So, if you see carefully, now we are telling that vector, whatever vector we are representing in terms of magnitude and, and direction, now I cannot think or I cannot represent every kind of vector in form of the graph or in form of the figure. Okay. Suppose if I will take the example of the space where vectors in form of matrices, vector in form of functions. So, we have taken intuitive idea from here and after that putting several axioms, okay, what we have done? We have created some kind of a space and in this space, what we have observed that several new concepts that comes into picture and that concept are very useful for the engineering problem okay or or some kind of physical problem because if i understood that what is meaning meaning of linearly independent then we can tell that okay if i have 20 number of vectors then how many vector is relevant for us okay if I understood the idea of basis, then I can I can tell that, okay, there is no need to worry even if I have infinite number of vectors, but using finite number, I can able to represent that. Even if I do not know how large a space, but I can able to represent it just by the linear combination, okay, and we make sure that using minimum number of vector, I can span that. Okay, and and for that idea of basis, coordinate, these kind of concept basically comes into picture. And consequence of that, we have received several good result. For example, I have already already told you that if I have some function f x, then I can able to represent that function f x if that is continuously differentiable. Then like c zero c one x plus c2 x square and something like that. Okay, so I can able to represent this vector in terms of polynomial. Okay, and and why we are able to do, do that? Because we know that this is going to form some kind of basis. 
okay so now if i have function then using simple basis basis is 1 x x square or something like x power n up to infinity i can able to represent some continuously differentiable function and obviously i have told you that how to calculate c0 c1 and c2 okay and in order to calculate c0 c1 and c2 taylor has used the idea of differentiability okay so he told that if you put x equal to 0 then all other term is zero so c0 is f f0 after that taking first derivative they are able, able to evaluate c1 c2 and cn so in this way you are able to understand why taylor's ridge expansion comes into picture okay so if you are able to understand the idea of basis okay then you are able to also understand that here whenever i have some function then that will represent at least continuously differentiable function is is represented by some kind of or lying on some kind of infinite dimensional space because inside the basis i have infinite many element okay second advantage what we have seen in the previous class that if i have some kind of algebraic equation okay then i can able to solve it i can give the condition under which under which this equation has some kind of solution even if this matrix is not a square matrix okay non square matrix so these kind of beautiful concept actually arises by the generalization of the vector addition and a scaling of the vector so we have just generalized it okay whenever we are talking about the vectors you might have seen that we are also talking two things okay so suppose if i have two vectors okay then i can i can talk about angle between those two vectors okay whenever i have one vector i am talking about the length of that vector okay so in today's lecture we are going to see that if we are in euclidean space okay so euclidean space means i am assuming that each entry is coming from the real number and we know that distance how to calculate the distance okay so now we are going to see here that whatever things we have explored during our school time that uh, that how to calculate angle between two vectors that now i am going to generalize okay and generalization give us very beautiful idea and due to that reason basically we are generalizing okay after generalizing we believe that i do not need any extra structure just just after generalizing the concept of angle i can get some kind of a structure which is able to capture lot of property similarly if you see the length length of some vector okay so in one dimension we have defined the length using some kind of absolute value okay so if i have to calculate the length from here then i will write x minus 0 like this suppose this is 0 okay if this is y then we will define like x minus y okay so basically norms are the generalization of length and this is the generalization of the angle between two vectors okay so we are going to explore this in today's lecture i hope that you are able to understand the basic idea so if you see the level of the linear algebra so what we have done we have started with set after that in set i have defined how to define a scalar we have understood using the concept of the field field theory and obviously inside before field we have explored the group ring this kind of concept okay so set now in this set i have taken the column vectors matrices function and their combination and after that i have defined the addition and a scalar multiplication so these two concept i have defined and i have lined up to this okay so set just talk about the membership membership means how to represent the member member inside inside some space okay and we have already seen that members can be represented by column vectors members can be represented in form of matrices or member can be represented in form of the functions like that and combination of all three so this concept level 1 is clear level 2 we have defined vector space 
and obviously I have told that inside vector space I have several associated concept okay so I, I, I am able to define that what is meaning of independent vector so we are telling that no extra vector so, so suppose that if I have collected some sets so I am going to give guarantee that if that is linear uh, in independent vector okay then I don't have extra vector okay a spanning a space means enough vector to produce the rest so we are telling that if any if in some space I have infinite many vectors but using some some lower number of vector I can produce everything okay I can span in the whole space okay and whenever we are talking about the basis basis means too not too many or too few okay so concept of a span is somehow somehow driven by the linear combination we have already seen and after that dimension means number of vector inside the uh, basis so we have already seen in uh, just when I have introduced about Taylor's reach so I have told you that why that is infinite dimension because I need one x x square x q up to xn okay or up to infinity due to that region okay so these kind of beautiful concept basically comes into picture when I have generalized the vector addition or addition of two vector whatever we have learned during our school time or a scalar multiplication of the vector Do, doing these two operation you can see that I am going to remain in that space only I am not going to leave that space okay in today's lecture I have told you that I am going to generalize two concept two more concept and that concept is angle and length okay so and we are going to establish connection between these two also okay so now you can see here that vector space we have already understood today I am going to explore about the inner product space okay and inner product space give the notion of orthogonality length and angle and we will if I have time then we will see one application also so we have cover up to here to here okay now we are going to basically define this now okay so you can see that almost now I am going, going to cover a lot of things I have covered up to here model module is all, already obvious most of time people are not using computer science people are using this okay so we are using set magma group ring field vector space okay and today we in today's lecture we are going to understand the concept of inner product space okay so introduction is that geometry of Euclidean space is founded on the familiar property of length and angle okay so whatever whatever physics we have learned during 10 plus 2 okay that is basically you have already seen that I am defining some kind of vectors and after that we are we are seeing the length of vector angle of vector so these kind of this is the foundation element so abstract concept of norm on a vector space formalize the geometrical notion of length of vector I have already told you that now what we are going to do now suppose that in in some space I have element like matrix matrix okay so using using the notion of norm now I am going to talk about the length of vector and if vector in form of matrices if vector in form of functions we know that if vector in form of column for example if I have something like x and y so we know how to calculate the length we know I have calculate length like this so now in this lecture we are going to explore that this is only one way to characterize length or some other way we have okay because what kind of restriction basically comes into picture suppose that you want to move from here to here okay but suppose there is no direct path available for here to here due to some reason then how basically we have to move we have to move from here to here and after that here to here okay it might possible in place of this path I have some kind of circular path okay so based on the possible path if I will just restrict like this then that then that is not able to represent the physical situation okay suppose that if you have to move from electrical engineering department to Lanka gate okay we know that some path in form of arc some path in form of a straight line okay 
So you can see that here, if we are going to capture this, then using this x square plus y square, I cannot able to capture. Okay, and due to that reason, I need some more generalized notion. But obviously, all property of length should be satisfied. So we are going to so uh, we are going to see in this course that how basically length is generalized with help of the absolute value. Absolute using absolute value, I can define length in one dimension. Okay, using that that help. Only I am going to define some kind of norm, and norm will give the more broader picture, more realistic picture about the distance between two point. Okay, so it means that norm is not unique. Okay, because the, what we have observed here, if I have to move in two dimensional plane from here to here, I have several path, infinite many path. So based on path, I have different different length from here to here. Okay. If obviously, if we will talk about shortest length, then that is given by x square plus y square. We have just learned so far the shortest length only. Okay. Now, what I am going to do, we are going to again generalize another concept: angle between two vectors. Okay. That whenever we are calculating angle between two vectors, you might remember that we are calculating the dot product of that, and after that, we are writing like this. During school time, we have already learned about this. Okay. Now we are going to generalize this concept, okay? And after generalizing this concept, you are able to see lot of beautiful thing again, okay? You are able to define projection in higher dimensional space, okay? And with that projection, you are able to define the Fourier series. You are able to understand that how people have has constructed Fourier series using the knowledge of linear algebra, okay? So that kind of things I am going to uh, to touch in today's lecture. Inner product and norm lie in the heart of linear and non-linear analysis. So now one another subject is called analysis, real analysis, functional analysis. So everywhere it is possible to show that we are using the concept of the norm and the concept of inner product. Okay, and norm I have already told you that norm is just generalization of the length of vector. Okay, whatever we have learned during school time and generalization of angle. Which we have represented using dot product that that will give uh, give us the concept of inner product. Okay, and another now after under under understanding the concept of inner product, now what I am going to do? I am going to take some vector space and inside that vector space I am going to define the inner product. Okay, so that space is called inner product space. So inner product space means I have some kind of vector space means I have some kind of element of field field will satisfy some uh, some axioms based on field I have created some kind of vector space which is going to satisfy two property like the vector addition and scalar multiplication and going to satisfy some axioms now we are going to introduce some kind of idea such that I can able to measure the angle between two vectors. Okay, and we are going to see that if I am going to measure the angle between two two vectors, then I am also able to know that what is length of single vector. Okay, so that kind of concept I am going to talk in today's lecture. Okay, so let us start the today's lecture. So observation, you all are already familiar about this. Suppose if you have two vectors. Okay, so dot product whenever we are defining between these two column vectors. So I have column vector v1, v2, vn, and w1, w1, w2, and wn. Then I can define the dot product like this. Okay, so if you see dot product carefully, then that is nothing but some kind of matrix product. Oh, okay, so matrix product between some kind of row vector and column vector. Okay, so I can represent or I can interpret the dot product. Just as a product of two matrices. Okay, now you can see here that dot product is the the cornerstone of the Euclidean geometry because why? Because using dot product, I can able to define the length of some vector. Okay, so if I take dot product by itself, and if I apply the Pythagoras theorem, then I can know that how how to define the length of this vector. Okay. Similarly, in three-dimensional space, I can also able to do, and similar kind of generalization I can able to do in the n-dimensional space. Okay, so it means that 
if I know the dot product, then I can able to define length at least in one way. Okay. But I have already told you that length between two point is not always in the straight line. Okay. Suppose that this road is not allowed. Okay. So I have to move taxi from here to here and then we have to move from here to here. Okay, now you might have seen that nowadays Ola, Ola have uh, has generated some kind of map. So they are seeing all kind of allowed path and based on the idea of norm, they are telling that which path is shortest one. Okay, so we are going to see the connection between several norm in the next class. But in today's lecture, just I am going to talk about the foundation of the in inner product. Okay, so consequently, the Euclidean norm or length of vector is founded by taking the square of this. So what you can do, first you can define the dot product and after that you can take the square root of that. And then what happens, whatever square root that is going to form the norm. Okay, so norm is nothing but the generalization with the length and in next class I will show you the definition of Euclidean norm. Okay, in today's lecture I can just restrict myself on inner product. Okay, so Whenever we are talking about distance, we know that distance is always positive. Okay, so that kind of property will satisfy by this. Okay, we also know that distance is zero whenever we are at reference point. So reference point is V1 equal to zero, V2 equal to zero and Vn equal to zero. So that is only zero. And after that one more restriction is that that should be satisfy the triangular property. Okay, so we know that if I move from here to here and if I move from here to here, then this addition plus this addition is always greater than this to this. Okay, so that is called triangular inequality. So that should, that three things should be satisfied. Okay, now if these three things will satisfy, then I can define the distance between two points in many ways. Okay, so we will look into that. Okay, now the elementary property of dot product an Euclidean norm serve to inspire a abstract definition of more general inner product. Okay, so try to see the definition. Okay, so 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 definition is telling that an inner product on the real vector space. Real vector space means whatever field element I am going to consider that is real number. Obviously, you can also able to extend this kind of concept for the complex number too. Okay, but most of time in our application real numbers are involved due to that reason I have restricted myself on real number only. Okay, so I have uh, I have taken the vector space B whenever I am talking about vector space means I am assuming all axioms with respect to vector addition and scalar multiplication is satisfied. Is a pairing that takes two vectors V and W and produce a real number. Okay, so what is main motivation of inner product? If I have two vectors, okay, and that vector C is going to lie in some vector space, some kind of finite or infinite that doesn't matter for us, then using some kind of notion, some kind of function you can you can think, then I, I am going to map this to real number. Okay, so and why only real number? Because you know that comparison in higher dimensional space is very, very difficult. Okay, so suppose that if I have this kind of things, I don't know that this is bigger or this is bigger. I cannot comment. Okay, I can just comment about the equality. I can tell that, okay, 2 and 3 is equal to 2 and 3. So in higher dimensional space, I cannot able to talk about which, which, which one is larger, which one is smaller. Due to that reason, what basically we are doing, we are converting higher dimensional problem into one dimension. Once higher dimensional problem is converted in, in one dimension and if I have real number, then I, I can able to define the orderedness. Okay, suppose after doing some kind of function, if that transfer to R and if one point is transfer here and one point is transfer here, then I can tell that, okay, after defining quantity in this way, I can tell that this quantity is higher than this quantity, like that. Okay, so whenever you have to do comparison, first you have to map from n dimensional space to one dimension. Okay, because one dimension space is very easy to understand and everything is ordered. If I have underlining field is real number. Okay, so, so that is the motivation here that we are going to produce real number by taking two vectors. 
okay and i am going to make sure that if i have three vectors if i have taken from same space then that will satisfy these three property one property is called bilinearity okay you can see that here i am not just talking about linearity i am talking about bilinearity okay what is meaning of bilinearity if you take the linear combination of two vectors and if you calculate the inner product with third vector then that should satisfy this kind of property where c and d are the scalar that is coming from the field okay similarly this should be satisfied so if these two property will satisfy then we are telling that that possibility of inner product comes into picture okay apart from that we have to also check the symmetry property okay why symmetry property is very very important because somehow i am going to map to the real number okay so either i can i am going to define length from v v and v and w or w and v that should be equal okay so due to that tangent symmetry is very very important here and positivity because i am going to generalize the length only some some kind of length so in place of and we know that uh, that what is meaning of length in order to calculate length what we have to do suppose if you just think about the dot product then i have to take dot product of of some vector with same vector okay and and obviously that should be zero so this is just generalization now okay so if these three properties go, uh, is actually um, satisfy then we are telling that that whatever inner product i have defined that is valid inner product okay if one of the property is violated then i can tell that that inner product is invalid inner product okay so let us try to see some some more discussion on the inner product so a vector space occupied with inner product is called inner product space i have already told you that now what happens that i have vector space and i know some kind of operator so i have some kind of operator and what is beauty of this operator this this operator is going to to take two element from from this space and that is going to map to some kind of real number okay that is the beauty okay so if now i have real number then i can able to do lot of things with respect to that real number we will see what kind of things i will do okay now one more thing i can do i can take only one real number every everywhere in these two places i am going to take same real number then it is possible to show that i can able to define the length okay so if you are able to define the length of some vector then obviously i can also able to define something more what something more i can define suppose i have vector x1 y1 in two dimensional space and x2 and y2 okay now i know that what is meaning of the distance between these two so so suppose that in order to understand the distance we are going to see some kind of way to show that these two vector how much they that that is apart okay so i can able to define this kind of things x1 minus y1 y1 minus y2 okay but still that is in two dimensional space so i need again one operator such that that will map to one dimension so x1 minus y1 square plus x2 minus y2 square like that okay so you can see that what i have done i am able to understand with the help of the notion of this kind of a scalar quantity because this is a scalar quantity i can tell that what is each these two vector are the same vector or different vector okay if these two are the same vector then that is equal to zero okay so somehow we are able to make the distance between two vectors in higher dimensional space okay we are also able to define the notion of limit in higher dimensional space okay we will see that kind of concept in the next part of this course okay so now what i am telling that if i have some kind of inner product if i define inner product and inner product means all three property by by linearity after that symmetry and positivity if all three property are satisfied okay after that once i define the inner product obviously i can also able to define the norm associated with that particular particular vector okay and how to define norm each and every element i have to replace by same element okay so you can see here 
one one thing become clear that inner product i can define in many many different way in some vector space b okay now if i replace b b and w by same b then corresponding norm appear so all norm is not remains the same okay we will check that so obviously here that positivity exams is satisfied uh, because whenever we are telling that something is norm then we have to again check three property so first property again positivity second property is triangular inequality and a scalar a scalar now uh, means uh, uh, that is called homogeneity kind of property that we have to check okay so that i am not going to check in today's lecture just i am going to tell you the combination uh, means connection so in order to calculate the nor first what you can do you can define the inner product and once inner product is well defined then you can just replace w by v and whatever things that comes into picture after that you can take the square root of them okay so so in this way i can able to def uh, i i can able to establish connection between the inner product and and the and and the length of this vector okay you try to understand that why this is true if you will take dot product of two vectors then i am writing like this cos theta okay so i have taken two vectors and after that i have calculated dot product now if you replace this w by v then what happens v will come into picture here and after that angle between same vector is zero so theta zero cos theta equal to 1 it means that v dot v is going to produce this okay and i i am just telling the concept of whatever concept of dot product that i am going to generalize using the inner product okay so basically similar kind of consistency is going to maintain here okay so i hope that you are able to un understood the connection between the inner product and 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 do, uh, and second thing that is the norm okay so inner product most of time whatever dot product we have defined we have defined dot product in order to characterize the angle okay we are going to see that if i have two vectors then what is the angle between that vector okay so now i am not going to define angle like quantity i am just talking about some kind of abstract thing okay that is behave like the angle okay similarly with help of that now i am going to define some notion of the distance some notion of the length okay now I try to understand here so most common inner inner product that is defined like this and one can easily check that all three properties satisfy here okay so bilinearity please do by yourself okay symmetry everything will satisfy okay now this is not only one way to represent inner product in two dimensional space so here v is v1 v2 i have taken column vector and w is w1 w2 okay and due to that reason i have written like this at the same time you are able also able to define inner product like this this is called weighted in inner product i have given two weight 2 and 5 okay so please check again that all properties of the inner product is satisfied so you have to check check the bilinearity you have to check the symmetry you have to check the positivity so please do by yourself here you can see that just i am going to check the positivity if you replace w by v then this is 2 v square plus 5 v2 square okay so that is positive number and after that that is zero if that is v v1 and uh, v1 equal to 0 then v1 v2 equal to 0 then that is only equal to 0 okay so if now if you create norm from here you can see that if you create norm from here then v1 square plus v2 square square root of that that is the length okay but here from here if you are going to to create now definition is is totally different okay now i can also define some kind of inner product like this okay and again you can check here all property will satisfy i am not going to do that kind of exercise please do by yourself and again here you can see that if i define inner product so all property property of inner product will satisfy but if you are going to define the notion of length now then you can see that now notion of length is basically v1 square after that v1 v2 v2 v1 and 4 v2 square square root of that so this 
so notion of the length is now going to change okay so notion of length is heavily dependent what kind of inner product you are going to select okay and most general inner product that is called weighted inner product i i can able to define like this okay so please check all the property all the three property okay so if you see the modern analysis so inner product and norm on function space lie at the foundation of modern analysis and its application why we are telling that you might have seen that whenever we are de dealing with any any dynamical system that is governed by either the ordinary differential equation x dot equal to fxu okay or more general x dot equal to ftxu that non autonomous system non autonomous force system or partial differential equation also okay so in this course i am not going to talk about the partial differential equation but if you show this if you see the solution of this equation that is nothing but some kind of function okay so now i have some kind of dynamical system and their evolution is actually going to lie on some kind of a space where each entry in form of the functions okay so using the help of inner product since now what what kind of things we have to make sure suppose i have dynamical system i know the equilibrium point so i have to make sure that if some disturbance comes into picture then my trajectory is not going to deviate much from the equilibrium point okay so what do you think what kind of notion is required for that purpose obviously i have to make sure that distance between xt and 0 should is should not be larger as time time is going to pass okay so now in higher dimensional space i don't know how to compare two quantity so i don't know how to define the distance due to that reason i have to map to one dimension space okay so how to map to one dimension space you can define the inner product and with the help of inner product you can define the notion of length or distance and then you can define the convergence okay and due to that reason if you see the modern analysis where we are using fourier analysis of some signal boundary value problems whenever i have to solve some kind of integral equation or some kind of uh, i will talk about the lagrangian equation at that time you can see that uh, this kind of things comes into picture and after that ordinary partially or numerical analysis everywhere this idea inner product and norm and where element in form of function space are involved okay and due to that reason now i am going to define some kind of norm of the function okay so what i am going to assume i am going to assume about some space and inside this vector space i am assuming that each entry in form of functions okay so what i am going to do first i am going to consider very very simple function and that what i have assumed that i have some function which is going to define in this this particular domain okay this is called interval so subset of real number i have already several time i have i have repeat repeat this if i have this real number then subset of real number is called the interval okay and i am assuming that is closed interval means these two point are also included and i have some kind of vector space and that vector space actually c0 means i am just make make sure that that is continuous i am not making sure that is differentiable if c1 means function whatever function i am going to uh, to tackle in this space that is also continuously differentiable if c infinity means infinite many time continuously differentiable suppose sin t cos t you can take that is infinite many time differentiable okay so i am just assuming that i have some kind of a space where function is continuous and between these two interval interval is also very very important whenever we are dealing with the function consisting all continuous scalar function and in that particular interval okay so now what we have assumed that fx is defined in this interval a and b and that is continuous okay and after that now what we are going to do i don't know how to define the length of some function so some 
in some space i have some function i want to define the length okay so now i have to actually generalize some kind of notion if i have column vector i know how to how to do that. at least i know that i will take each and every component i will do a square of that and after that i will take the square root of that but here i have element in form of function okay and due to that reason i have to become more, more careful so one of the way first what you can do you can define the inner product of you can take or fetch any two functions from that space and after that you can define the the multiplication you can try to see that this is why i am telling this as a vector space because i am assuming that i have continuous function so if i have two continuous function and if i will do point by addition and point by a scalar multiplication then that will satisfy all axioms of the vector space okay due to that reason i can assume that i have some kind of vector space where function is continuous function and and continuous function with point by addition and a scalar multiplication point by a scalar multiplication is going to produce some kind of vector space now i have vector space what i have done i have taken two functions and i have defined inner product like this okay now once we define inner product then we have to check that that will satisfy the property of the inner product or not i have to check all three axioms okay so first thing we have we have to check that this is well defined or not okay but what is meaning of well defined since we are on those vector space where everything is continuous okay so i have to make sure that after doing operation same can kind of continuity will maintain here you can see that the product fx and gx of two continuous function is also continuous and hence integral over a bounded interval is defined and finite okay so i have to make sure that if i will define some operation and using that operation i can define the inner product so that will lie in same space and that map to some kind of real number because what we are telling that whenever we are defining some kind of inner product then i map to the real number okay so so it means that at least definition is okay now i am going to come to the property okay so symmetry property f and g or if you, 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 you since fx and gx is one dimensional function so even if you will swap this then things remains the same due to that reason symmetry property will satisfy similarly i can able to check the bilinearity okay so please do by yourself i think that these kind of things is not too difficult okay what i have done i have i have uh, taken c fx plus d gx and hx okay because whenever we are defining the inner product so we are defining two uh, three vectors if i have so i have defined linear combination and after that i am taking the inner product with third vector okay and if you take the inner product based on the definition that is nothing but the multiplication with this kind of definite integral okay and definite integral is going to define between some limit a and b okay because uh, please be sure that this this actually inner product is very very sensitive with respect to this interval okay if you change the interval it might possible that whatever property of the inner product space that may or may not be satisfied okay so now the second bilinearity axioms is also proved similarly similarly positivity i can able to prove if if i will replace g by f then i can tell that fx square so and this is area under curve so positive i have some positive quantity so area under curve is always remains positive okay and this is zero if that is zero so by property of definite integral you are able to check it okay now i what i have told you that if this will satisfy the property of inner product okay it means that if i have continuous function then at least in this way i can able to define the inner product and what is consequence of that i can able to define the length okay so i can able to define the length just replacing fx by uh, g by f and after that i have to take the square root of that so in this way i can able to define the norm and this norm is called l2 norm okay i will tell you the story why name l2 norm comes into picture when i will deal with the norm linear space means vector space with norm so that is called norm linear space vector space with inner product that is called inner product space okay so so actually what we have seen that inner product space is more general than the norm okay because whenever some inner product space comes into picture then 
obviously norm is associated with that okay now if i will take some kind of norm it is possible that in some case that will satisfy the property of any inner product and some case that is not going to satisfy the inner product okay due to that reason i have two different kind of space one inner product space and one is norm linear space both space one can define with the help of vector space only okay so so l2 inner product and norm of function are viewed as a infinite dimensional function space i have already told you that whenever we are we have some kind of function okay so in order to represent that function i need infinite many basis okay and due to that reason that is whenever i am taking the function that is going to lie in infinite dimensional space so l2 inner product can also be applied to more general function okay so here what we have done we have taken very very special class of function that fx is continuous okay but it is possible to show that if i remove the the restriction of continuity then also i can able to define but we have to become very very precise okay because whenever we remove the idea of continuity then i can not able to define the riemann integral okay at that time sub levec or this kind of integral comes into picture and due to that reason at least in today's lecture i am going to restrict myself only on, on inner product okay so if function space is more general okay it might possible that some function that is not not continuous and and at that space if i am trying to define some kind of inner product then that is called hilbert space okay so now just terminology so please do not become afraid with terminology okay so what we have seen if i have some function continuous function and if i define inner product okay and how basically we have defined inner product we have taken help of integral okay and in this way i have defined l2 inner product okay so that that space is called inner product space okay now if i will take more general function again l2 kind of things i will do okay and that space is called the hilbert space and if you see the hilbert space now a day we are talking about quantum control quantum mechanics quantum modeling quantum computing so everywhere this idea of hilbert space is involved and due to that reason i have to take one lecture on hilbert space also at least one or two lectures okay now let us come to the next concept that is weighted inner product okay and not so what is meaning of weighted now i have already told you that i have a space okay so i can define inner product in many way not just only one way so you can what you can do you can take any continuous function wx okay and make sure that is that a scalar function is greater than 0 always positive and then you can just keep here okay in this way i can able to define the weighted inner product okay and once you define the weighted inner product so this is weighted inner product and this is once you define the weighted inner product and i have already told you that if i i know the inner product with each and every inner product i have some way to define the norm so i can define this norm so this is weighted norm now you can tell okay and this kind of idea is basically very much useful whenever you are doing data analysis or statistics so data driven modeling when i will do at that time i will i will involve the concept of the inner product space and norm okay now you might have seen one thing that during school time we have learned that when two vectors are per perpendicular it means that when angle between those, uh, these two vector are 90 degree okay so how basically we are conforming we are taking the dot product and we are making make sure that equal to zero okay so we are telling that if dot product of two vectors are zero then that is called the uh, dot product then two vectors are perpendicular it means that angle between two vectors are are the 90 degree okay or multiple multi, uh, multiply of the 90 degree okay now is it possible to extend same kind of notion for the inner product okay so what we have seen that using the help of the dot product okay or taking idea from the dot product and by incorporating some more axioms we have defined the inner product space okay similarly whatever way to define the length using pythagoras theorem 
same kind of things i have extended for generalized class of distance that is called not okay or generalized uh, class of length that is called not okay so now yeah, is it possible to extend notion of per perpendicular in more general space so if you are going to do so then notion of orthogonal comes into picture you can see here that people has given different name so whenever mathematician are going to give some kind of name different name it means that previous name is just a special case and this is more general it means that both are not exactly the same it might possible one will imply sometimes in some special case one will imply others okay that kind of things happens so you can see here i will give some counter example also then you are able to visualize that perpendicular and orthogonal both are not always the same thing okay so how basically we have defined we have defined exactly in the same way like perpendicular we have taken two vectors and after that if that is orthogonal then we are telling that their inner product that equal to zero okay now try to see like this suppose you have two vector 1 and 2 and so i have some space and i have taken two column vector from that, that space and and i have calculated the dot product in r2 space okay so dot product is nothing but v1 v1 w1 v2 w2 you can see that is zero it means that these two vectors are perpendicular okay now what you can do you can define the weighted inner product okay because i can define inner product in infinite many way i have already told you that just i have to make sure that all three axioms axioms of symmetry axioms axioms of the bilinearity and axioms of positivity should satisfy okay so if you if you see this then all axioms are satisfied now using since this is inner product space now what i am going to do i am going to check the inner product of these two vectors same vectors and you can see that that is non zero okay it means that with with respect to this inner product these two vectors are not orthogonal okay so orthogonality is completely depending on what choice of inner product you have selected okay so it might possible that v and w i have selected the inner product that is just v v1 w1 plus v2 and w2 due to that reason i get the same idea like like it means that for this particular example if you select inner product like this inner product like dot product then concept of orthogonality and con concept of perpendicular uh, perpendicularity of two vectors are exactly same but generally that is not the same okay so this example basically highlight this okay and i have already told you that in several physical situation distance whatever way we are defining distance that is not proper okay when due to that reason i i need some more general way to uh, to define the distance okay similarly if you have polynomial also so i have some kind of function and after that i have defined inner product like this okay so we have already seen that if i have two function and if that function is continuous you can see that this is continuous and this is continuous function so now i am going to check that is orthogonal or not and obviously that is answer is yes but if you change the interval you can see that that is not orthogonal so whenever we are defining the orthogonality at that time i have to become very very precise and i have to also also check in which interval we have defined the inner product okay so generally if you are not going to put this limit then things is not proper okay now what i am going to do i am going to give you idea that now you are able to understand why fourier series whenever we are learning fourier series then why this kind of form will appear okay so what happens i have some kind of periodic function okay so what is beauty of periodic function that if i know some kind of interval i know that if that is 2 pi so if i know the behavior of this function in 2 pi then i can able to replicate it okay so let us try to see that i have some kind of function space so so function space and i have i have understood that as a vector space by taking taking point by addition and scalar multiplication and fx is periodic now what i am telling that any periodic function can be represented with the help of the cos and sin okay 
so why basically we are able to claim this because it is possible to check the, that this cos kx and sin kx will form some kind of independent vectors okay and after that if i know the independent vector so using help of independent vector since periodic function so, so a space that is generated by all kind of periodic function okay so my spanning space is nothing but some kind of function space that is actually generated by all kind of periodic function okay now what is basis since we are in function space we know that i have inside basis i i need infinite many vectors and due to that reason k i am varying from 0 to infinity okay i hope that you, you are able to identify now that fx is periodic function okay and that function you can see here that i am assuming that that function is continuous okay so if i have some kind of continuous periodic function so i have selected independent vectors okay i don't know the behavior of function fx still i am telling since infinite many representation for the periodic function is possible so i have selected very simple representation using cos x and sin x okay obviously constant is uh, the obvious case if k equal to 0 then cos cos 0 is 1 okay now what kind of space of all periodic function that is the function space okay if i understood the addition by by point wise and scalar multiplication again by point wise and what is basis i have infinite many basis and due to that reason infinite dimensional this is the example of infinite dimensional system okay so if you see the formula of formula of the periodic function then then you might have seen that fourier has written like this okay and how they have tell that how to calculate ak and bk by this formula so let us try to interpret this okay so first for simple way you try to interpret like this suppose i have some some quantity here okay so how basically we are trying to categorize the this particular distance what basically we are going to do we are going to take the dot product of this and this okay so dot product suppose that i have some vector v and this is x so i will define the dot product and after that after once dot product is defined then we are defining the direction okay x by norm of x okay and in this way i can able to know that what is component in this direction we are also able to know the orthogonal co component in this direction v by y and y by mod mod like this okay if you see carefully then now what we have done that we have generalized dot product by inner product okay because i don't know if i have some kind of function i have matrices i how to do operation okay and due to that reason i have generalized so fx function i have to know the component of it because i have now considered these two as a coordinate system okay so once you fix the coordinate system so x is now replaced by cos kx and and this coordinate is sin kx so now what i have to do i have if i have function fx then i have to know the projection of this function along this and how to calculate the projection using dot product and this is the generalization inner product is generalization of the dot product and due to that is an fx and inner product of this this will give the projection okay and after that if you associate this the the norm of this so cos kx i am going to calculate the norm of this okay and i know that how to if i am able to calculate the inner product i also know how to calculate the how to calculate the norm just i have to replace fx by cos kx okay in that way i can able to define this quantity also and and obviously ak and after that x in place of x i have to write the original coordinate that is cos kx okay similar kind of a story about the pk okay in this way you are able to understand that whenever we are talking about the fourier series basically what fourier is telling that you can select more convenient coordinate frame and that coordinate frame is generated by cos kx sin kx provided your function has some kind of property okay and and i have already defined that how basically one can define the norm of uh, inner product if you have two continuous function 
one can define using L2 norm. So same kind of definition you can put and you can integrate from 0 to 2 pi. So please be careful because I have already told you that if you change the duration of integral, then quantity will change. Okay. And in this way, I can now, since that is combination of cos x sin x, cos 2x sin 2x, so every time we have to to do the projection so 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 fx representation is nothing but the summation of all projection okay so anyone has confusion on this particular idea that how basically fourier series comes into picture then please let me know okay so if you are able to understood this concept then lecture is in from my side okay so what we have seen that in today's lecture that I have, if during school time, I have talked about the vector. I know how to add two vector, how to scale out two vectors that remains vector. And I have generalized it. Okay. Now in place of vector, I can play, uh, take column vector, row vector, functions, matrices, that doesn't matter. Okay. And I, I come up with some kind of a space that is called vector space. And what is beauty of vector space? I can able to define independent vector, a spanning, basis, and dimension. Okay. And with help of this basis, uh, basis or dimension, what is another possibility comes into picture? I can able to represent complicated quantity. You can see that now fx is any periodic function, but I don't worry. I know that that can be represented using cos kx and sin kx. Okay, similar kind of a story I have shared about the Taylor series expansion. Okay, so now there is no need to remember it. Okay, because most of time what happens, a student become very much frustrated that whenever suddenly some some teacher will come in the class and they will they will write the Fourier series. They don't know why why basically this kind of things is going to to occur. And after that things become more boring. Then that teacher just take example and after that they start solving. Okay, but main theme that you have to under, understood the idea and after that you can code it in software. And now you can take any function and they will give you the Fourier series. There is no need to do calculation. So mathematician always telling that how to avoid the calculation. Okay, and due to that reason means actually I have seen when I have joined this institute, I found that most of time Whenever I am asking a student, then they start telling me about formula. They then don't know, they do not know that how basically that formula is come into picture. And due to that reason, I have decided to, to uh, means generate one course that is physical significance of mathematical method. Okay. So, so this is the story about the, uh, this course. Okay. Now in the next lecture, I will tell you some more story about the norm linear space. Okay. And it is possible to show that using norm linear space, you can able to do a lot of things. Okay. So up to here, if you have any confusion, then please let me know. So if you don't have any confusion, then I'm going to end the today's lecture. Thank you very much.